Welcome to another break of the James Bill. I hope you're well. Thanks for joining me. Well, I've just got back from Kent and uh, we look like we've got quite a few hours left of nice weather. So I'm going to seize the opportunity and do the second coat of Bethnal Green on the outside of the boat. Right, I've got to clean the top of the boat uh, with cold soapy water. Uh, the reason for it is because it's pretty hot. So uh, I'm going to clean the boat, clean the surface down, and in doing so, I'll also cool it down. quite an enjoyable task uh, looks like we're going to be all right for the rain to the, this afternoon um, really want to get the definitely the roof done second coat and probably the final coat for the roof um, and the sides uh, if I can get them done then I, then I will but yeah so shoes off for this one so I've cleaned down the roof it's all dried off nicely so we're uh, gonna do this I've got a beer on the go the sun's out this is an idyllic way to spend an evening. on the roof we're about to go and do the sides now well the sky is looking a little bit ominous get myself another beer Karen this beer bottle opener is bang on I'm pretty sure the Duke never drank out of the bottle though well I'm obviously not going to do the bow extension because that's not going to be in Bethnal Green but the rest of it is Let's get cracking. I see what you're saying because they've shooed around it. Yeah, it's all this here. It, it, so getting the skeg off was a nightmare. So basically, I'll make a new skeg now as well. Okay, we're in the right place for it. It's though. all right. I mean, you know, it's not. Yeah, a I see where it's it just, is. It's just, uh, it's all this area here. Look, yeah. it, they brought the skeg. They brought. I thought they'd come up to the skeg, but actually, they've done a reasonable job. They took the skeg off, they shooed it, and then reattached the skeg. Yeah. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah. Unless you've got x ray vision, you don't really know these things until <laughs> you get into it. So, excellent. 
So whilst I was out in Kent this morning, Richard has chopped off my skeg. And for those of you that don't know, the skeg is the bit that goes between there and into the bottom of the rudder. He said it wasn't easy to get off. It was really well welded on before. And obviously that's got to come off because we're putting this plate on the back there. And the skeg is in his workshop getting fixed up. And the other thing he's done is in here, right in the front of the bow. Obviously, this is all going to be boxed in, but he's wanted to cut some of this away so he can basically fill it with weld. Because if this was this bit here at the front of the boat is just boxing. So if that was to puncture, it's, it's like a bumper on a car. So if that were to puncture, it's unlikely because it's obviously solid stiff, but um, it just means that water could then flow into the boat. So what Richard's doing is just kind of sealing up all the area around it. It'll obviously be uh, smartened up a lot before it's uh, finished, but we're only using the small welder at the moment. The more powerful one's gonna come out next week. I'm just going about taking off this excess here. There's a ridge against the steel. So I'm kind of cutting it along that. And I'm glad to say that the Frog tape is not taken off the paint. The paint, well, it looks like it has a little bit there. kind of cutting against the steel gives it a nice kind of watertight edge. Well, I'm well glad I managed to get an entire coat of the boat done today. Um, the uh, roof on both sides, so um, you've got to see these kind of opportunities when you can, weather-wise. Um, obviously, I've got the sign writer probably in the next two weeks. I'm just waiting to hear back on a definite date. Um, and it needs three coats of paint on it before Darren does that. So, uh, yeah, basically, I kind of... I was thinking if it got to the end of this week and I hadn't got that second coat on, then uh, kind of time could be against me a little bit. Um, and it would be a lot easier for Darren to do the sign writing on the hard standing than it would be whilst the boat's moving around on the cut. You've seen what it's like when I'm when I'm kind of working on it outside and it's bobbling around a bit. So um, yeah, so that would be the plan is to get the second, sorry, get the third coat on. And I'm going to do the third coat on the roof as well. I know I said up there that I'll probably only do two. It's definitely going to need a third coat. Um, and then, um, yeah, so maybe next week, ideally, if I can. Although I've been given a bit of a break this weekend because uh, we were meant to go down to Bristol, uh, some old school friends to play golf and go out and stuff. But... Uh, one of them had been told to isolate, so we can't do that. So, um, 
but I think we're still going to meet up and play golf and do something slightly different, just not him. Um, so, um, but I might get some time this weekend, basically, is what I'm trying to say, um, in order to get that third coat done. I need to get myself some more Bethnal Green. Uh, I think I need probably two more tins. So it's a tin and a half, basically, for this boat. Um, so, yeah, I need two more tins for that. And I've got loads around the stern to do and stuff. Um, and uh, what else? Yeah, right, audio is the next thing. So um, I need to work out, basically, I've determined that I'm getting a Pioneer head unit. Um, so I'll go into it when I get the unit, but basically they've got, they got these amps, which is what I'm going for. So, um, and it's not, I'm not getting a separate amp or a subwoofer, I'm running it just like a car, basically. So it's gonna have a head unit and four speakers. Um, the speaker locations are all going to be in the saloon. I was toying with the idea of having two in the bow bedroom and then two here and kind of the dinette would be the central point. But because of the walls and all the stuff, the sound up there is just not going to work at all. It'd probably be OK if you're in the bedroom, but it's not going to be fine if you're down here. And most of it's going to be down here. So um, I'm going to put two speakers in the dinette. That's fine. I can work out a way of doing that. That's easy. But the two down here is less obvious as to where they should go. Um, I'm thinking there might be one in the top of this cupboard. I don't really like the idea of that, facing out that way maybe. Um, one in the bottom here possibly facing out. Don't really like the idea of that either though because there's, I'd have to build a box and just kind of occupy some of the space. The dinette's obviously perfect for it. Um, but yeah, so I'm just kind of working out the locations of that. I said I'm not going to go for a subwoofer um, or an external amp because it shouldn't need it. It should be plenty to have um, the amp. The, the, the head unit comes with um, 450 watt channels. So if I get kind of 80 watt speakers, it should be fine. I'm not going to have any speakers outside. Um, I'm hoping the sound will be fine for out there. The, but it would be a Bluetooth unit anyway. So I've got a Bluetooth speaker if I needed to. So I can always pair it up. Um, the other thing to consider is the actual location, the physical location of the of the head unit. It's either going to be in the dinette, which would be more useful if I'm in that area, and I think it would probably look better, or it could be in the electric electrics cupboard, which would be more useful if I'm in the kitchen, sort of galley, or if I'm outside in the deck. Um, I think it's going to be in the dinette, but um yeah either or um if it was in the electrics cupboard it'd either be facing that way so it's kind of coming out pointing that way or it'd have to be installed vertically so uh but either either or um i've got i've had to order loads more um cables and stuff i've ordered some speaker cables some really good speaker cable um i've ordered some more of the six mil cable i need some for the fridge and i need the bloody hell, that small run I got was basically 30 centimetres too short. Um, and I can't pair it off with a 2.5 mil cable. So I've ordered some extra cable. I'll be able to use that somewhere else anyway. Um, I'll probably be able to use it for the, um, for the uh, audio installation somewhere. Um, so that's one thing to do. I think I also need to build a couple of kind of cupboards in the top of that bit there, in that bulkhead. Um, otherwise it's all a bit plain even when you've got the dinette cushions which are going to kind of come up halfway um, I think I might need some kind of things up there so I'm just having a look at some different kind of designs and ideas for that obviously it's got to be contoured to the same thing on the roof or ceiling like that one is so uh, so that's that um, I'm back to London tomorrow I've got meeting in Watford tomorrow um, I nearly met Saki Bugger today actually in Kent but I only gave him like five minutes notice as to where I was going to be um, so sorry mate next time though I will, I'll give you a bit more bit more notice um, I'll probably be down in London for a couple of days I need I, I really want to get down to Southampton and see uh, Carol again um, she's got to go back into hospital um, kind of sometime soon so I'd like to see her before she goes in um, and help us get herself ready um, and I could pay a little trip to the chandlery and see if I can get that Ex, uh, the extra paint I need for the outside of the boat see if I can get that there uh, so yeah loads to crack on with though so um, but yeah it's all heading in the right direction
good again another kind of big positive step today you're getting that second coat done um i said i needed to get it done at a particular time and it was kind of preying on my mind so i'm glad that's uh done and out of the way now anyway look after yourselves take care bye bye